Hey everyone, my name is Ethan Taylor, and I'll be talking to you about the renewable energy opportunities in rural America. So before we get started, uh, we're going to start off with the energy in the United States, and then we're going to look at how rural America is currently affecting that. And then we're going to move on to the different types of renewable energy located in rural America. And then we're going to follow up with that with some of my recommendations on how we should allocate our future resources to re renewable energy. And then finally, we will conclude the presentation. All right, so the United States is currently facing a severe energy crisis. Uh, beginning with industrialization, the U.S. has increased energy consumption at a very fast rate, uh, and we can only expect this trend to continue. Uh, this is demonstrated by the plot here showing the annual energy consumption of the United States. Um, also, we're seeing a push for more renewable energy uh, resources across the nation. However, crude oil and natural gas still dominate the energy sector, um, and we can see that here with this pie chart showing that natural gas is at 27% and petroleum is at 36% for 2017 in the United States. So moving on to rural America. Uh, rural America is the leading push behind the development of the United States renewable energy. Um, this is demonstrated by the electric cooperatives represented by the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association, also known as NRECA, where 95% of the 900 co-ops represented generate or produce renewable energy within their communities. This is crucial development for the United States as these electric co-ops and rural communities lay the foundations for the transition to larger installed capacities of renewable energy in the future. This development has also led to overall lower energy prices in rural areas, which has made energy more affordable for more people and continues to inspire the advancements of these technologies. So in figure three, uh, we can see that our renewable energy consumption is only expected to increase, uh, which is shown by the projected portion of that plot. All right, so also according to figure four uh, in the map, there are also a lot of resources that we can take advantage of in the United States. Uh, rural America is a perfect place to implement and develop renewable energy sources uh, as the loads on power grids are generally less than densely populated areas, making it more feasible to test newer systems. Uh, a cool project that's going to be taking advantage of some of these resources is TVA's uh, project to add 484 megawatts of solar capacity to the grid, which is an increase of 44%. Uh, this will lead to technology advancements and cheaper energy uh, for TVA's customers. All right, so there are many types of renewable energy that modern energy producers have access to. In rural America, these sources mainly include wind power, solar power, hydropower, uh, biopower, and geothermal power. There are several factors that determine the best fit for renewable energy sources in rural areas, such as the planned transmission infrastructure, climate and landscape, resource availability, and federal and state incentives. All right, so now we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of these renewable energy resources. All right, so starting out with wind power, uh, wind power is generated by the use of turbines to convert kinetic energy of the wind into electrical energy. This is done by turbines that are mounted on towers that range from 60 to 80 meters tall, and then those are spun uh, by airfoils that create lift within the presence of wind. Uh, and some of these turbines can produce up to one to six megawatts of power. The largest advantage with wind power is it is a great option for the environment uh, with almost no negative impacts to water and air quality. Wind power is also extremely modular, allowing for any size wind farm to be built based on the needs for a community. This is even more important when looking at the small physical footprint of a wind tower, which allows these turbines to be placed on almost any excess land. Wind power does not exist without wind, though, and uh, the amount of power that can be generated greatly depends on the speed and consistency at which the wind blows. Even with the great benefits of wind power, it's met with uncertainty and no promise of long-lasting power production. Also, wind power is limited geographically, as demonstrated by figure five, uh, where you only see the main resources for wind along the coastlines and in the Great Plains region and uh, out west. All right, so moving on to solar power. There are several different types of solar systems, but the general process is converting solar energy into electrical energy. 
Solar power is perhaps the leading push behind renewable energy sources across rural America as it is most likely to be adopted by different co-ops and different energy producers. Solar power has the same advantages as wind power. Uh, there is practically no impact to the air and water quality in surrounding regions. Also, some systems have no moving parts, which assist greatly for the longevity of these systems. Solar power is also scalable, uh, meaning that any given system could be scaled to power anything from a home, community, or a city. All of this comes at a price, though, um, as solar power is only possible at higher capital costs compared to other renewable sources. Uh, the largest disadvantages for uh, solar systems is the variability in regard to the weather, time of day, and seasons. Uh, solar cells are also extremely inefficient, which is only worsened uh, without routine maintenance to clean dust and debris off of the cells. Figure 6 shows that solar resources are concentrated in the southwest. Uh, this region also experiences higher temperatures and a larger concentration of dust and sand, all of which decrease the efficiency of the solar system. So it's really a balancing act to find the correct place uh, to place solar farms as you want to find a place with a high solar density, but you also want to make sure that you can keep the panels clean and efficient. So moving on to hydropower, hydropower is perhaps the most well-established renewable energy resource that we have access to. Hydropower has been developed in the United States since as early as 1640 when water wheels are, were used to convert the kinetic energy of water into mechanical energy. The principle is still the same today. Modern hydropower systems convert water's kinetic energy into electrical energy. There are many implementations of different systems, but the end goal is generally the same. Just as wind and solar power, there is almost no negative impact to the air and water quality. Also, given ample amounts of water uh, to pull from, hydropower can be generated at varying speeds based on the given demand for a region. The early adoption and development of hydropower has led for it to account over 75% of today's renewable energy production in the United States, which is mainly accomplished by 192 large hydroelectric plants located across the nation, which we can see in figure 7 here. Along with energy production, hydroelectric systems, mainly dams, uh, help flood control in surrounding communities downstream. Although there are many advantages, hydropower is met with a great deal of environmental concerns. These include insulation, the destruction of riverside habitats, migrating fish, and the list goes on. Although there have been dozens of revisions to try and combat these issues, uh, we will likely not see the development of a new large-scale hydroelectric system in the United States. All right, next up is biopower. Uh, biopower is created from converting the energy stored in organic matter, uh, also called biomass, into electric energy. Biomass can consist of, uh, of energy crops, uh, crop waste, and many other organic materials. The basis for biopower is the production of methane, which is then used to generate electricity. And this leads on to the largest advantage of biopower. Um, so it can be converted to electricity using a uh, process that's similar to converting fossil fuels to electricity. And this means that we already have pre-existing infrastructure, um, which, is, which is great news. Biopower is also good for the environment as biomass is converted into electrical energy uh, before it decomposes to release methane gas into the atmosphere. Uh, figure 8 here shows the availability that the United States has to the creation of biopower. Uh, there is clear concentration in what seems to be regions with ample farmland and excess crops and manure, leaving it difficult for most regions in the United States to consistently produce large quantities of biopower. All right, so now we're going to look at geothermal power, um, which is generated by converting the thermal energy from the Earth's core and surface into electrical energy. The energy exists in geothermal reservoirs, which are systems of fractured rocks that trap steam below Earth's surface. This steam can then be carried up to the surface to generate electricity. Geothermal power has one main advantage over solar and wind. Where sunshine and wind can vary, uh, the heat from Earth's core is more reliable and more consistent. This leads to geothermal plants often being more reliable than coal plants even, as coal plants have a system uh, availability of 75%, while geothermal plants have a system availability of 95%. However, there are some disadvantages with geothermal power, uh, and that is that the generation sites must be carefully managed, as the steam uh, used to generate electricity is nowhere near as inexhaustible as the heat from the core. Um, also, all geothermal sites are extremely different, leading to radically different designs depending on site location and characteristics. Also, geothermal power is limited uh, geographically, as we can see in Figure 9. 
um, as it looks like most of our geothermal resources are located in the western United States. All right, so now we're going to be looking at some of the recommendations I have uh, as far as allocating future resources to renewable energy. Uh, so there's a couple of options. So we have the renovation of old systems or the installation of new systems. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, renovating hydroelectric systems first. So hydropower is perhaps one of the most important renewable energy sources for electricity. Uh, we have over 1,400 uh, mid, mid to large scale hydroelectric systems uh, providing 7% of the nation's total energy and around three-fourths of the nation's renewable energy. Although the Department of Energy has determined that there are no more unrealized large hydropower opportunities, there is still room to renovate older large scale hydroelectric systems. The renovation of hydroelectric systems is a trend that is happening in countries such as Brazil and China. Uh, some of these systems are under contract to replace old turbines with new turbines with an increase, uh, increased capacity of up to 25%. Uh, this renovation tends to uh, cost anywhere between 10 to $100 million, uh, depending on how extensive the renovation is. This could become even more practical with smaller and large hydroelectric systems located in rural America. So these systems can be easily modified to generate upwards of 10% more energy at a fraction of the cost of the initial installation. Uh, with the smaller systems in rural America ranging from 20 to 80 megawatts, uh, there could be a dramatic increase of 2 to 8 megawatts uh, of additional installed power per each hydroelectric system while varying in, uh, at 1 to 10 million dollars uh, in cost to upgrade. More options to allocate future resources to would be building new solar and wind farms. Uh, with the current technology of solar arrays, it is estimated to cost roughly one million U.S. dollars for one megawatt of installed solar capacity. Uh, this price is close to the close to that of the renovation of smaller hydroelectric plants, uh, and will only decrease as solar technology advances. However, we still aren't at this point yet in most of rural America. Most electric co-ops are currently overseeing smaller installations of 200 to 500 kilowatt solar farms. Uh, this is essential as it allows lower price to entry and is not as negatively impacted as much as multiple megawatt solar farms are with weather, dust, and temperature. These smaller farms are installed across the southern United States, while large-scale solar farms such as Nevada's $1 billion U.S. dollar 690 megawatt Gemini project are positioned in regions such as the Midwest. Uh, wind energy is slightly more expensive than installing solar power, although the price will continue to decrease as technology advances. Something to also take note of is the smaller footprint of a wind turbine tower, which means that you would be saving on loss of space. Uh, with that being said, installed wind power is anywhere between 1.3 to 2.2 million US dollars per megawatt. Uh, these large turbines uh, are only suitable for specific geographic regions, making them not as well used uh, around the nation. Um, and then also the same arguments can be made for geothermal and biomass power plants, as these plants cost between two to five million US dollars per megawatt. This is mainly because of how exclusive the generation sites have to be, as well as how new the technology is. Just like all other sources of renewable energy, the installation price will continue to decrease as technology advances. The decreasing cost of renewable energy in the U.S. is also demonstrated in this plot here in Figure 10, where we can see that the installed cost of solar power has been dramatically decreasing, and we can only expect that continue, uh, as well as the same trend for all other renewable energy sources. All right, in conclusion, all renewable energy sources have their place, and all sources will continue to become cheaper, more efficient, and more readily available as time continues. However, most utility and large-scale applications of any renewable source have very specific geographic regions where installation should take place. This is the opposite for small-scale installations, as geographic regions are less strenuous in, in order to allow these systems to function properly at reasonable efficiencies. In order to determine where to allocate future resources, there needs to be a clear understanding of the surrounding region and what type of energy will benefit the area the most. All right, that concludes this presentation. Um, I hope you all learned a little bit about renewable energy resources across rural America, and if I was able to answer your questions, I would. Have a great day.